Greetings to you, beloved in Christ Jesus. May the peace and the goodness of the Lord be with you. I know that all things are working together for your good, as the Word of God says. That is why I come your way with the Word of God that I believe will transform and inspire you greatly. I know that this Word will bless you. And the topic and the or the title of this message is Check Your Surrounding. Yes. I want you to check your surrounding very well. Which kind of people are in your life? Which kind of people are in your life? Because personally, I believe that the kind of people that are in your life to a great extent determine the course and direction of your life. Now, I want you to come with me to 2 Kings chapter 5, where the story of Neymar the leper, who was also a great soldier, is rightly recorded. And in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 11, we are told that Neymar was very annoyed. He got angry because the prophet Elisha had told him that he should go and wash in the river Jordan to claim his healing. Now, Naaman's miracle was right in front of him. His healing was right in front of him. If you would like to put it, his promotion was right in front of him. But some way, somehow, Naaman missed it. His anger displaced him from his miracle and healing. And sometimes in life, I tell you that you don't know what will happen, but you will miss it. Your anger might misplace you. Your attitude might misplace you. Your mistake and errors might misplace you. It happens in life. It happens in life. And when that time comes as it came for Neymar, where his anger displaced him from his own healing, that is what brings me to my message. Check your surrounding. You see, when Neymar got annoyed and refused to wash in the river Jordan, the Bible said that in verse 13, his servant came to him and said, Father, if this prophet had told you to do something great, you would have done it. This small thing he's saying, you don't want to do it. We beg you, just go and wash in it. You see, that is what makes me understand that the actual miracle of Naaman was not his washing in the river Jordan to claim his healing. But the actual miracle of Naaman were the people that were in his life. The people that were in his life. They realized when he was making the mistake. They realized when he was not going in the right direction. And they were prepared to make sure that their friend, their master, was doing the right thing. Now, I want to ask you, which people are in your life? When you miss it by your anger, when you miss it by your rage, when your attitude misplaces you or displaces you from your own miracle and healing, do you have friends that encourage you? Do you have people that say it is not over? Do you have those people that say that don't give up or there is none? Check your surrounding because it is not anybody or you, you have to call friend. It is not anybody you have to call friend. Love everybody. That one is a command. But it is not everybody you must make a friend. Certain people don't qualify to be your friend, I tell you. But everybody qualifies to receive your love. Fast forward into the New Testament. I'm reading the book of Acts, and, and I realize that in Acts chapter 20, a similar thing occurs. It is no wonder that 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 tells us that be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners because communication is reciprocal. It goes and it comes. So the kind of people that are in your life determine the kind of communication you have. And if it is evil, then I'm telling you that you are not going anywhere in life. Check your surrounding. Check your surrounding greatly. So fast forward into the New Testament, Acts chapter 20. You realize that the apostle Paul was preaching. And there is a man amongst the congregation, among the people, listening to Paul. And the Bible said that he began to sleep. He began to doze off. And he dozed off till he fell into deep sleep. I wonder how he was able to do that. Under the feet of the apostle Paul, you are able to fall into a deep sleep. Ah, well, that is not my concern. But... My concern is that he was not the only one there. Eutychus was not the only one listening to the Apostle Paul. There were people that were surrounding him. And these people were listening to the Apostle Paul. But they watched on as Eutychus slept and, and, and fell into a deep sleep. Till he fell from the third floor. Which kind of people surround your life? Are they friends that watch you destroy your life? Are they friends that watch you say we are enjoying ourselves, we will give our life to Christ later? Are they friends that tell you to give up? Are they, which kind of people surround your life? And as I end, let me give you this message. See, it is not everybody and anybody that qualifies to be called your friend. Jesus Christ 
had a large following. He had the outer people. He had the inner people. And he had the innermost people. And our Lord Jesus made sure that people qualified or transited from one level to the other based on his affiliation with them, based on the direction of his life, based on what they had in common, based on certain intimate things. And so we hear that he fed over 5,000 people. It tells us that he had a large following. These were the outer people. And every human being should have outer people. It is not everybody you meet that should be intimate to you. It is not everybody that you meet that should be an ally. Check it. You have to have a criteria that makes people pass on from one level to the other. It is not a crime. It is not by force to call everybody your friend. It is not anybody you must invite into the inner and intimate chambers of your life. And so we have the 12 disciples. Jesus had the 12 disciples. And these disciples were the inner chamber friends. The 12, out of the lot, out of the over 2,000 people, he had the 12. And it didn't end there. Out of the 12, Jesus had the innermost people, which were the three disciples he went everywhere with. Now, beloved, which people surround your life? Which people do you call friend? Which people do you call friend? Even Jesus Christ applied this principle. He knew who was supposed to be in the outer chamber. He knew who was supposed to be in the inner chamber. And he knew who was supposed to be in the innermost chamber. In the Old Testament, it was only one priest that qualified to go into the innermost chamber. It means that the people that will qualify to come into the innermost chamber of your life are very few. Check your life very well. Because the people that are in your life, they are only in two categories. They are either doors that lead to doom. Or they are gates that lead to greatness. Which kind of people are in your life? Check your surrounding and make a quick adjustment. I come your way with this word to bless you. If you are looking for a friend that should be in the innermost chamber, that friend is Christ Jesus. And I want you to invite him into your life, wherever you, you are. He's already knocking on the tablet of your heart. If only you will open up to him, invite him in your own way. I have no words to say to you. But just invite him and say that, Jesus, I want you to come into the innermost chamber of my life. I am tired of human being. I am tired of breakups. I am tired of disappointment. I am tired of the system of this world. I want you to come into the innermost chamber. And trust me, Jesus will come. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. Till we meet another time. Shalom.